This is Truth is Greater Than Fiction, and I'd like to welcome you to a world of horror. Five true Canada stories. Number one. I live in Quebec. The natives in the area love to share scary stories. They also love to spook the white people. My dad's native friend comes over one night for Cognac with my dad when I'm nine. It's midnight. Get over here, bud, he says. He asks me if I've heard of Watcher. He begins to tell a story about some native guy on the reservation who bought a camera and started filming every moment of his life. He was super fascinated by the technology. His family thinks it's fine for a while. Then he starts filming everything. Every moment. Sometimes, he would run out of tapes filming the forest outside of his house. Sometimes, at one o'clock in the morning. I need to buy more tapes, he would tell his wife. His wife starts freaking out a bit, and she finds a cache of nearly 3,000 videos. Most without talking, just forest. His wife hides the camera. When he comes home, he's angry that he can't find the camera. His wife doesn't confess and says maybe he lost it. He calms down for the night and the wife goes to bed. The next day, the man, his wife, and his child all go missing and are never found. Police find stashes in the basement, mostly him routinely walking around the house and shots of the forest. Fast forward 15 years. I'm 24 now. I wake up and notice a rock has gone missing on the shelf above my bed. It doesn't really matter because it's just a rock and I make nothing of it. Later, my girlfriend asks if I know where the small hand beer went. I don't. Fast forward a bit more. I'm broken up with my girlfriend. She thought I stole her brother's BMX and sold it on a Facebook buy and sell page. I promise I didn't, but she doesn't believe me. I come home one day, and my house was broken into. Nothing was stolen, but I noticed the rock is back above a shelf. Fast forward a bit more. Stuff starts going missing all over my house. Not important things, just little things. Stuff sometimes reappears like the rock, but I'm never sure. I've decided I had enough, and I install security cameras outside my house. Nothing for months. I start taking pictures of the objects I think are going missing. Fast forward a few days. I wake up in the night cold. The back door is open. I close it and check security footage and look closely at the trees. Trunks that would otherwise be completely straight curve around something. Only in one area, in one circle. I notice the receiver is full of videos, and my iPhone is full of pictures. I go and delete all the videos and pictures, but the pictures only temporarily delete. I delete them again, but I notice one of my house from the forest before the items started going missing that I don't remember taking. It's 12 a.m., and I go outside to find where the picture was taken. I match position with the picture when I notice a figure in the window of my top floor. It's me sitting at this computer desk. I book it inside without even thinking. I notice that all of my missing objects are back the next day. The rock is missing again. I'm 29 now and nothing weird has happened since. Both parents are now deceased and I have no brothers or sisters. I have no friends, but for neighbors who hate me. And last I heard, my ex-girlfriend died of alcohol poisoning. Number two, I'm driving home from work. I live in a secluded place, so each time I had to drive from work. It's winter time, so it's quite dark. I always drive through a secluded road in the woods. It's eerie, but rather comfy. I mostly have my iPhone hooked up to my car stereo, but this night I decided to just listen to some radio. 
I was changing the channel. It's mostly pop and rock songs and annoying commercials. I get to a station that's a talk show. I decide to listen to it. It's two talk show hosts talking about bringing in a woman for an interview. She's supposed to be a student talking about student issues. The topic seemed pretty boring to me, but whatever. I said, screw it, I'm going to listen to it. They get the girl on the show and ask some standard questions. I find out she's from some town near Perth and studying history. I found it strange that my car stereo did not recognize the radio station's name. I shrug it off and just listen. The girl had a really soft voice, as if you would hear her apathy coming through the speaker. The hosts were struggling to keep the interview interesting. She also seemed to wander off into some other ramblings. Then it started to get pretty odd. The interview went something like, Host, so you knew from beginning that you were going to study history. Girl, yeah, pretty much. I know things. I can see them forming, you know. Host, what do you mean? Girl, you know, you just seem to know, I guess. Like, I knew that my father was going to leave my mother. I knew I'd get a sister with the new guy my mom would date, and then I'm going to die at 25. You know, you sometimes feel that stuff. At this point, I was confused, wondering what did she just say. Host, you knew you were going to die? Girl, well, yeah, I've had this feeling all my life. Host, so, are you afraid? You know, knowing? Girl, no. Host, brave girl, Jim, brave girl. The two hosts seemed to laugh it off. Girl, I'm not afraid. I was, though. Host, so, what changed your mind? Girl, well, it happened. Host, how old are you? Gina. Gina, I'd be 26. Host, you would be? Gina, yeah. This was getting interesting. Host, so, you're trying to tell me that you're past your point of death? Gina, yeah. Host, but you're here with us. How is this possible? Gina, I don't know. I can't leave. The host seemed to get a bit agitated as the guys started to make fun of her. One of the hosts tries to put the interview back on track, but the other guy kind of stops him. It goes on about how they want to know more. They argue for a bit, but the guy just goes and asks. Host, so, Gina, how did you die? Gina, my boyfriend strangled me. Host, did you know this was going to happen? Gina, yeah. Like I said, I've seen it. You feel it. The host jokes. Should have picked a better boyfriend then. The other dude. Don't forget, now ex-boyfriend. They laugh it off, and it gets a bit awkward. Host. Gina, really? Are you telling me that you were dead? In front of us. Dead. Gina. Yes. The other dude goes something about her being on drugs. Again, all I hear is the host going. Holy shit, she's really cold. I can hear two full seconds of radio silence before my car breaks down. My car just completely died. I managed to stop it alongside of the road. It's in the middle of nowhere, in a wooded area, and my phone was dead. I go out to check the engine, and it must be a problem with the battery or something. Like an idiot, I just stare at the engine. I don't know anything about engines. I decide to wait for anyone that might pass by. I take out a cigarette and just chill. It's cold, but I like to be outside. I'm just hanging by the side of my car when I hear footsteps coming. And from the road, I see a figure. It's feminine. It's a mid-twenties girl. She kind of nods and I nod back. She asks, what happened? Oh no, car trouble. My phone's dead. Can you call anyone? He just looks at the car. No. What do you mean? Don't you have a phone? She still is just looking at the car and replies. No. We're kind of in silence. So, like, do you live here? She says, well, I used to. Awkward silence. 
talking to this chick just felt weird. Well, I need to go home. Uh, do you know if there's a house nearby or something? I knew there was a small town, but it would take me an hour and a half of hiking. I wanted to see my chances. The girl is silent, but finally speaks. Do you know what it's like to be hurt? Do you know? Yeah, I guess. Depends on what, though. Silence again. She continues. You know, I loved him and still do. Okay. So why did they do this? Who? Did what? At this point, I couldn't breathe. I was suffocating and panicking like a mad dog. I was trying to grasp air. And then, she vanished. I throw myself on the ground. I don't know what to do. This went on for about half a minute before I could finally breathe air. I was there for another 20 minutes before deciding to hitch to town. Luckily, a truck stopped a couple of minutes later and I went home. Number 3. I was camping and hunting in remote Canada on historic nature reserve land full of old camps and spiritual locations. It's also a secluded, many miles wide, gated area that very few have access to. It's extremely remote, middle of nowhere in the mountains, and in between two no-name gas station towns. I've been trusted with a key by an elder slash caretaker. I'm not a native, it's a long story about how I got access. Anyway, I'm camping with my girlfriend and her friend. We're way out there, nobody else for a hundred kilometers or more, with the access gate locked behind us. The three of us are sleeping in the back of my pickup besides the river. Around 4 a.m., we all wake up to a nearby noise. It sounds like talking. I shush the two girls and contemplate going into the truck and getting my shotgun. I listen more intently. There are two male voices very close by, and they are arguing loudly over the noise of the rapid river water. They're yelling at each other in a language I couldn't recognize. It sounds like intense, rage-fueled fighting. We all hear it, and the situation is tense. Suddenly it's silence, just river noise now. The girls are terrified. I go into my truck and grab the gun. I stayed up scared for a couple of hours until the sun rose. I look around for evidence of another vehicle, or people, or anything, and I can't find anything. We leave immediately. The access road gate is still locked. Later on, I tell the story to the aforementioned caretaker. He tells me I should stay away from that particular river camp. Why? Men are buried there. I thought he was just messing with me at first. But later, I returned to that area. In the nearby woods, I was able to find numerous wooden plaques nailed to trees. They were old and rotten, but a few were recent enough to still have legible writing and faded white paint on them. There were names and dates written on those plaques. I haven't gone back since. Number 4. This was three years ago in eastern Canada. I was exploring an abandoned industrial town with a few factories and a hospital. I basically felt like I was being watched the whole time. Nothing new there. Most of the factories were in too poor of a condition to go into due to flooding. I decided to go to the hospital. It's not much better than the factories. It's crumbling, and most of the roof was caved in. The only area I could explore was the eastern wing. I had to climb up a story and go through the window. I get in, and it's just dead silence with drops of water every now and then. It was extremely weird, considering all the holes slash damage that there was no wind inside of the building. I go through the rooms for about 20 minutes and decide it's time to head out. An extremely loud noise breaks the silence, the noise of a wailing type sound through a metal vent. I jump because it was extremely loud, instant goosebumps and hair standing on end. Against all my senses, I go down the stairs where the noise came from. I go down a corridor and there are a bunch of sandy type dirt all over the floor. It's extremely cold down there and the feeling that someone was breathing down my neck was unbearable. 
I turn to leave and start walking back, when I notice that on top of my footprints in the dirt, there is another set of footprints. Not shoe prints, bare footprints. I bail. I ran my ass out of there. So that was probably the experience that scared me the most out of all of them. The feeling of dread the whole time alone was like nothing I've ever felt before in all my explorations. Number 5. I live in Canada, British Columbia to be specific. When I was younger, I was talking to a cousin during Thanksgiving. He worked at a radio station in a small city in northern Alberta. While talking, I mentioned how much I loved creepy stories, so my cousin told me this one. It was late December, and my cousin was on his way to the radio station. The station was a ways out of town, sort of in the middle of nowhere. It was snowing a lot, and it was incredibly dark outside because of the clouds and the snow, which is pretty normal. My cousin arrived at the station just before 9pm, which is when he took over the schedule until 4ish. He parked his car and noticed that Greg, who worked the schedule before, was apparently no longer there, as his car was gone. My cousin walked into the station to find it in its usually dimly lit state, which is how both my cousin and Greg liked it. When my cousin got to the broadcast room, he found it empty. Whatever song Greg had chosen to be his last was still playing. My cousin just assumes Greg left in a hurry. I had left a long song on to cover for the time when he left and my cousin would arrive. This has happened before. So my cousin takes off his jacket and gets all ready to begin his broadcast. The song ends and my cousin starts. Things go fine. He does a couple talking segments and then plays some jazz. This goes on for some time. It's about midnight when my cousin gets up to use the bathroom during one of the songs. He returns to find the song and stop. My cousin could have sworn that the song was longer than the time he spent in the bathroom. He shrugs it off. Things continue as normal, though my cousin begins to feel uneasy. After a while, my cousin has to use the bathroom again and does the same thing. And the same thing happens when he returns to the song being off. My cousin is genuinely creeped out now. My cousin begins to feel relaxed as time goes on and decides to make some coffee. When he returns this time, the song is over again. My cousin is freaking out at this point. He decides to stay in the broadcast room the rest of his shift. Suddenly, a banging on the door freaks him out. He looks around, expecting to see something terrifying when it's one of the local RCMP members looking at him worriedly. He opens the door and the RCMP member tells him he needs to leave with him immediately. Turns out when Greg left in a hurry he had forgotten to lock the door and somebody had come in before my cousin arrived. Every time my cousin would leave the songs would stop and someone would be heard breathing heavily and muttering into the mic. The RCMP member heard this on patrol and he decided to swing by to see if my cousin was okay. After escorting my cousin out, the RCMP member found a homeless man in the audio room, which looked into the broadcasting room. Which means the whole night this man, possibly deranged, just sat there watching my cousin and waiting till he left. I tried to find out if this homeless dude was like crazy or not, planning on murdering my cousin, but he didn't really get that much information from the RCMP member when he arrested him afterwards. Even if he had no malicious intent, it's still creepy to think that he was just there looking at my cousin the whole time. Thank you for watching my video guys. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my other World of Horror and True Scary Story videos. If you'd like to keep updated when I post a video, please follow my Twitter. Thank you, and remember, fear keeps us going.